Nick the Wrecking Ball defends his WBA title against Ronnie Rios in a very, very fan-friendly ding-dong to-and-fro humdinger of a fight. To be fair, it wasn't that to-and-fro. But Ronnie Rios didn't come here to lay down. He came to have a go. And considering that he's only had one fight in the past two years, which was a fight earlier this year in May, and the fight before that, he got TKO'd in the 12th round by MJ Akmadaliev. He has been having some hard-fought fights and has only had one fight leading up to this Nick Bull fight. And in the same two-year period, Nick Bull had had seven fights. So he was active, active and ready, rearing to go. And with his style of pure pressure, 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 pressure. And when we're talking about pressure, not only does this guy come forward very rapidly and very forcefully, he's very violent with his output. I mean, this guy will throw seven, eight to ten shots and at least eight of those ten shots will be power shots. At least six of those eight shots will be power shots. At least six of those seven shots will be power shots. This guy's just velocity, velocity, proper, proper violence. And it's not silly punches. He's not swinging and winging them in. He's short and he's shorter than most of his opponents. He was shorter than Ronnie Rios. He had shorter arms than Ronnie Rios. So he's all about closing the distance, getting in there quickly and punches in bunches. This guy started off the fight with like four or five hit combos. I mean, this is the featherweight division. 126 pounds, two weight classes under lightweight. These little men usually throw a lot of punches, but five, six punch combos with pure power to start the fight, that's separate, I can't lie, that is separate. That is what I call ultimate pressure fighter tic tacs. This is pressure fighter tactics at its most ferocious. Three or four shots being power shots. This is how he started round one. He's warming up. This is how he's warming up. Three to four shot power shots. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm talking about straight at his opponent, very little head movement. And I'm going to get back to that. Straight forward at his opponent with a velocity of punches. One, two, three, four, five. Double jab, then three hits. Double jab, then four hits. And Ronnie Rios automatically understood the assignment and he just covered up straight away. The air muffs, you know them... Put the gloves up by the head. They call it air muff blocking. You put the gloves up by the head. You tuck in your elbows. So you're covering your body and your head in terms of defense. But at least two or three of these shots, four of these shots are going to get through. Because Ronnie Rios is going to punch with Nick Ball, which he showed. He's punching with Nick Ball. And he's also throwing good shots. Double jab right. Double jab right. To the body. To the head. Hooks to the body. Double jab. It was good, good boxing from both guys. But Ronnie Rios is more cerebral and he's more of a boxer puncher. He's not just a pressure fighter that's come through, boom, boom, boom. So they weren't just clashing. Ronnie Rios understood that he couldn't just stay in front of Nick Ball. So he was moving side to side laterally. He wasn't really taking much steps back until the second round. Second round starts off again with Nick Bull throwing his punches in bunches. Whole leap of punches he's throwing per 10 second interval. Then he'll rest for three seconds and then he'll start again. And he's got a good set of punches. He's got very good punch selection. He just, for me, the only criticism I'll have of Nick Bull is that he doesn't move his head. He does not move his head. And in the midst of that second round, it came to fruition that the lack of movement of the head caused a problem because Ronnie Rios, as he's jabbing with Nick Ball and throwing his shots with Nick Ball, he's losing these rounds. The first two rounds he did lose, but he's still catching Nick Ball flush with shots to the head and flush with shots to the body. And subsequently, he opened up Nick Ball's nose, broke his nose, and now he's bleeding profusely. I like that word, profusely, when we're talking about these bleeding occasions in these fights it was so violent his nose was just open the blood was just streaming streaming out and Nick Bull was just wiping his nose like I'm just wiping to wipe this stuff off my nose like my nose is running like you know like boogers and he's just wiping his nose like his nose is running it's not slowing him down he's not hindered by this situation he's still coming forward with velocity it's like I don't respect you I don't respect your punches I don't care what you're doing I'm at home I'm in Liverpool. These people have come to see me knock you out. I don't care if you're Mexican. I don't care if you're tough as old boots. I don't care. I'm still knocking you out. 
And that was the mentality that Nick Ball had. And he just kept on going forward, going forward, going forward. But he's not moving his head. And Ronnie Rios is very, very experienced in this situation. He's a two-time title challenger. This is his first rodeo. He's been here before. But this type of pressure was just a lot. And after he got his nose broken in that second round, he comes out for the third round. Nick Ball, that is, comes out for the third round and he throws 10 shots. Bang, 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 bang. Just throw 10 shots straight. Boop, boop, boop. Like two jabs and then eight power shots. Boop, 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 boop. Ronnie Rios is covering up, covering up, covering up, covering up. Trying to do his work as well in between. Trying to throw some punches in between the punches like, as he does. But then, as Nick Bulls come away to start back his attack, he then throws seven shots this time. So he's gone back to set up his second attack. And in his second attack, he's thrown seven power shots. Uppercuts, overhands, uppercuts, overhands until Ronnie Rios just has to fall. He's covering up well and he's blocking most of the punches, but he had to drop. The pressure was just too much and he just dropped out of sheer pressure and exhaustion and just accumulation of power shots. Gets an eight count. Very good. So that third round was a 10-8 round for Nick Bull. But remember, his nose is busted. So every time he goes back to the corner and they clear up his nose, he comes back out and Ronnie Rios catches him with them shots to the head because Nick Bull's just not moving his head. He is not moving his head at all. It's straightforward. He will cover up. He will bring his hands up to cover his head. But then he's going to throw six, seven, eight, nine, ten shots. And in between them six, seven, eight, nine, ten shots, Ronnie Rios would put the air muffs up and then he would just throw out his jab on his right every now and then, catching Nick Bull flush every single time. Boom, opening up his nose again. Bleed, bleed, bleed. But... Nick Bull don't care. He does not care and he keeps coming forward and he's just throwing punches. And it just went on like this. Round after round after round. One of those rounds, Nick Bull is really trying to get this guy to fall again and he ends up pushing him in his head and dropping him with a push to the head which looked like a punch but it was actually a, a punch come push. And the ref then calls it an eight count. I didn't think that was fair. I can't remember what round it was exactly but I didn't think it was fair on Ronnie Rios, but such is life. That's how it went. And he carried on. He carried on, carried on, carried on. And he was having his joys in there. He was having his successes in there. He was hurting, well, I wouldn't say he was hurting Nick Ball, because if he was hurting Nick Ball, Nick Ball weren't showing it at all, because he was just walking straight forward. And something, this is another thing about Nick Ball, which kind of bothers me. He very much smothers his work. He lunges forward. He would lunge, lunge. And he, these lunges with these power hooks and these power uppercuts. It's like he's trying to do even a, a dragon punch even or a tiger uppercut type situation. He's lunging forward and throwing these uppercuts. Now, I just think that some of these boxers, they're just not cerebral enough. They're not calculated enough. They've got the opponent hurt, okay? You've got your opponent hurt. You can think about what you're going to do now. Where do I want to land this punch? Let me look for an opening. Let me faint there so he opens up there to get my hook over that, that side. Or let me throw some body shots for him to bring his head, hand down so I can come up with a shot to the head. No, it's pure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shots at the target that's been covered up by the elbows or the gloves. So you're just constantly hitting elbow and glove. And then when he tries to punch, then you will get through with one or two or three punches. If you were more cerebral with a Nick Ball, you would have got this guy out of there earlier in my opinion, watching the fight and watching you perform. Because one thing about you, Nick Moore, you have got one hell of an engine. You went from round one to round 10 on that same trajectory. And even when you slowed down a bit, coming up to eight and nine, and you didn't look tired per se. It wasn't like you were tired. You were still throwing multiple punch combos. Seven, eight, six, seven, eight, ten punch combos still. I mean, to end the fight in the 10th round, I don't know. I think he might have thrown 10 to 15, 10 to 12. Let me not exaggerate. 10 to 12 punches at this guy, which ended up sending him through the ropes to the other side of the ropes on the canvas. 
and he ends up crawling back under the rope. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter crawl back under the ropes to get back into the fight. This guy was determined. Ronnie Rios was not just going out like no punk. I ain't quitting. I'm getting up. You're counting me out on my feet if you're counting me out. I am not just going to give up. But the way he looked in his face was like, yo, I'm done. But he didn't say I'm done and he didn't act like he was done. He was going true. He climbed, he crawled back under them ropes, got back up, the ref's counting, and his corner eventually just throws the towel in. They're like, this guy ain't going to give up. Let's save him. Throws the towel in, and that was the end of the fight. Nick Ball retains his WBA title. Now, he himself said in the post-fight interviews that he knows that he was getting hit too much and it's things that he needs to work on and all of this type of stuff. So he's aware of his faults. And I don't know if he's aware of the fact that he's smothering his work so much. Hopefully he is. And hopefully he can learn to be more cerebral. He's still fresh on the scene. As a doctor with 22 fights, 22 professional fights. He's still rather young in the game. I remember back in the day when I was growing up in the 80s, 90s, a fighter would have to have 20 fights before he's really considered to have the ability to fight a champion or to become a contender so with that being said i still think that nick ball is young in the pro game he never had some long expansive amateur career he wasn't fighting at the olympics and all of these type of things he had a good steady amateur career but he didn't have any real amateur career on the world level of the amateur system so he really did need to go through a battle of 20 fights but he didn't because he was that good of a pressure fighter and with that being said he retains his WBA title and what I've seen I've heard that his mandatory Stephen Fulton is actually having a rematch with Brandon Figueroa now that they're both up there at the same weight class as Nick Ball he was supposed to be Nick Ball's mandatory but I've heard that he's having a rematch with Brandon Figueroa which makes sense because they're both PBC fighters so that can happen over there and Brandon Figueroa is also up there at that weight class it was a very good fight with him and Brandon Figueroa so let them have that rematch if they're going to do it because Nick Ball is talking like he needs to fight Ray Vargas again he wants that rematch with Ray Vargas and I don't know what Ray Vargas is going to do because Ray Vargas ain't done anything since he fought Nick Ball the last time. His last fight was Nick Ball. So he ain't been doing anything. That rematch might actually do something for him. That might actually give him some money in his pocket, get him working again because he ain't done nothing since March having that fight with Nick Ball. Nick Ball's had two fights since then. And he wants that rematch with Ray Vargas because he's saying, listen, I'm supposed to have the WBC belt as well as my WBA. So I want to go get that. So I don't know what's happening with that, but I know that his mandatory is not is supposed to be having a fight with Brandon Figueroa again. I'm going to watch that and see what happens with that because I'm going to keep my eye on that. With that being said, well done, Nick Bull. Well done retaining your title. Please, my guy, fix up these little errors that you have because if you fix up these little errors that you have, my guy, I can see you being up there in pound for pound rankings. I can see that because you, my guy, are a top level pressure fighter. There's levels to every type of fighter. You've got the pressure fighter, you've got the pugilist specialist fighter, the dodge rain fighter, the pure boxer fighter, and then you have the boxer puncher type fighter. These three styles are the main styles that fighters use, one or the other. There are particular fighters, the top, top notch fighters can toggle between two different styles, maybe even all three. If Nick Ball could learn to be pressure fighter slash boxer puncher, I can see him doing that. Then he would remind me more of a little Canelo and be more thoughtful with the punch selections once he gets his opponent hurt. I would tell him, go watch some Mike Tyson fights. Early Mike Tyson. Watch Tyson's early pro career, like when he first got his title to when he lost his title. Watch them fights there and you will understand what I'm talking about, about picking shots. Even watch Terence, watch Bud, watch them man there. They man there pick shots, watch Canelo. Them man there pick their shots after a specific time once they get their opponent hurt. And Nick Bull can be that guy. I can see it. He gets his opponent hurt, but then he rushes and crowds the work. But well done. Let's go, Nick Bull. I'm watching, I'm a fan, 
Very, very exciting fighter. Got a big following in Liverpool. If he has another fight in Liverpool, I'm looking to go. I'm not even going to front. I'm going to look to go if he has another fight in Liverpool. Or in the UK. If he, once he fights in the UK, I'm looking to go. Well done, Nick Ball. Marching on to whatever's next. Hopefully you get that Ray Vargas fight. And I know the Shake's backing you. And I know the Shake was probably watching that fight as well. And I know them, the Shake, you know the Shake likes excitement and violence. And you're the epitome of that. So anyway, boom, bang, well done. I will see you guys in the next video.